few people joining us hopefully from across Asia and ASEAN as well. Um, my name is David Davide Guarini Gilmartin. I'm here in Hanoi, so not, I'm not in here in Hanoi, I'm actually here in Saigon at the moment. Um, and welcome everybody. I'm the academic manager for uh, British Council's English for Education Systems. And on the screen, hopefully you can see all our presenters this afternoon uh, from uh, the Digital English Theatre Project. Uh, Jonathan, who you'll meet in just a few moments. Nick, who's from the Hands Up Project. Um, Koi, who's down in Kunter with his colleagues Ian and Tuang as well. So you're going to meet all of these wonderful people this afternoon in the next hour, an hour and a half. We'll try to finish no more, about quarter to four, but no later than four o'clock, okay? Uh, our Indonesian colleagues, uh, British Council Indonesian colleagues have another webinar starting at four, and I'm gonna introduce you and show you the link if you wanna register for that. Uh, Tech Talk at four o'clock, part of a series. Um, so without too much uh, further ado, how many times have we heard that over the last 18 months? <laughs> um, we'll get on. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about the background to our Digital Learning Innovation Fund project here in Vietnam. And then I will hand over to Jonathan, who will say a little bit more about the, the Digital English Theatre project, one of the three projects. And then we'll hear from Koi, from Tuang and from Ian. And you'll hear a bit more from each person uh, from each person later. After each presenter, you also have maybe five minutes for some Q&A. And at the end of our session this afternoon, we'll have um, more time uh, for, hopefully we'll have some more time for any questions. So please feel free to write your questions in the chat. Okay. Um, and yeah, please like Marina. Hi, Marina. Uh, please just, if you can write in your chat, just say good morning, good afternoon. Uh, where are you from? Which province in Vietnam or which part of the world are you from? That would be great. So we all know who you are and where you're from. Also note, as it says at the top of the screen, we are recording this webinar. We'll be sharing it on the British Council Vietnam YouTube um, uh, website, uh, YouTube channel afterwards, okay? So I'm going to start sharing, just to give you a little bit of background about the Digital Learning Innovation Fund. Just bear with me a second, is that the right one? Okay. Oh, they're all backwards. Never mind. Okay, so hopefully you can see my. Can you see my screen now? Ian, can you give me a thumbs up? Because I can see you. Okay, great. So, um, hopefully you know about the British Council. Okay. Um, oops. We were founded in 1934, focusing on culture and education, and we build connections, understanding, and trust between people in the UK and other countries through arts and culture through education and through the English language. And the project you're going to hear about today is a perfect and a wonderful example of that. Um, <clears throat> and in 2019, 2020, globally, we connected with, before the pandemic, we connected with 80 million people directly, as well as almost 800 million people worldwide, and even more since the pandemic. Um, as I say, I work for the English for Education Systems uh, part of the British Council. Um, and we, our work is organised into three main impact areas where we look at ELT, English Language Teaching and Education, we look at English and Empowerment, and we also look at English Connects, which is our digital work. So many of you, if you look on the right, you will see the Teaching English website. Hopefully many of you will be familiar with that. That's an example of our digital work. And again, the project this afternoon is going to explain a lot more about that as well. Um, we have a global framework. Uh, for our work as well. If you look at the bottom, um, you can see we look at other cross-cutting themes, including gender equality, inclusion, and educational technology and digital resources. So again, this project is a, is a really good example of that. Um, in Vietnam, British Council has been in Vietnam since 1993. We work very closely with the Ministry of Education and Training, as well as the National Foreign Languages Project on a wide variety of projects and programmes. 
and English language teaching development has, in support of the NFLP strategy, has always been a priority area for the British Council. Um, and NFLP and the British Council are always looking at ways to collaborate to support inclusive, quality English language teaching, learning and assessment across Vietnam. Uh, that's our main uh, reason for being here and working in the way we, we do. Um, in terms of digital work, we have a very strong track record in digital innovation. Uh, some of you may remember from a few, many years ago, from 2008 to 2011, we had the Teaching English in Vietnam, uh, the, the network, the website, which had lots of resources for teachers. Um, <clears throat> oops. And we've had other projects such as the Bridge It project with Nokia and Pearson, and we've done other consultancy work for NFLP as well, looking at different types of digital and online platforms for teachers and learners here in Vietnam. <clears throat> and that brings us right up to date with the Digital Learning Innovation Fund. So this was a response to COVID. Obviously, as we know here in Vietnam and across the world, COVID really started in January, February 2020. In British Council globally, we had we created a, a digital task force. Um, and then in September of 2020, uh, as part of our virtual ELT mission, we made the announcement of the Digital Learning Innovation Fund in response to COVID. And then in January of this year, we put out a call uh, for projects with two main themes. And as a result of that, we received nine proposals. So the, oh, the, the, the um, Digital Learning Innovation Fund itself, um, again, designed to support NFLP, looking at inclusive and accessible approaches through digital, through educational technology, but also looking at partnerships between the UK, UK institutions and Vietnam institutions as well to generate new research, new insight, new innovations to English language teaching and learning. Um, so that's what the that's the genesis of the Digital Learning Innovation Fund pilot. As I said, we had two main themes. One was looking at digital content and the second was looking at capacity building for teachers, learners, teacher educators. And the project you're going to hear about today is, is very much fits into these two themes, particularly in capacity building. So the last thing I'm going to say, apologies if I'm going through this very quickly, but we have a lot to cover this afternoon. Um, we having announced the call in January this year, we selected three projects from the nine in March and those projects were launched in May of this year. Uh, so we have the virtual mentoring and online CPD for grade six teachers from IH London and Hanoi Pedagogical University number two. That's one of the three projects. We also have the VVEXELT project, the Vietnam Virtual Exchange for English Language Teaching from Coventry University and Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And the third, by, and the, by no means the least, the Digital English Theatre Project, which is what you're going to hear about today from International House Belfast, the Hands Up Project and Kunta University. So that's a very quick overview of British Council, the fund and the three projects. And now before I hand over to Jonathan from, uh, from IH Belfast, just so you know, at four o'clock today, our colleagues in British Council Indonesia will have the fifth of their Saturday Tech Talks. Um, so you can, if you have a phone, you can uh, use your phone to get the QR code and register if you haven't already. If you're interested to join that uh, tech talk starting at four o'clock today, free to register again, some really interesting uh, content there. This afternoon, they'll be looking at nurturing autonomous language learners. Um, and again, we'll put the link as well in the in the chat for you if you can't register by your phone on the QR code. That's coming up at four o'clock. And one more uh, notice in January, uh, in the next of our series here in Vietnam, on the 15th of January, in the next of our series, we'll be looking at another this, another one of the three projects. We'll be looking at the Vivexel project with Coventry University and Hanoi University of Science and Technology. So again, if you want to register for that, uh, that webinar, use your phone and snap the QR code. That will take you straight through to the registration link. Okay, don't worry, I'll be showing you these links at the end of the session as well today. 
for both the VBEXL webinar in January and for the um, oops, and for the let webinar at four o'clock. OK, so that's a very quick introduction to the Innovation Fund. Now I hand over to my colleague Jonathan, who will tell you a little bit more, give you a little bit of an overview about the Digital English Theatre project itself. Over to you, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Thank very, you. Much. very much. So yes, as you can see uh, from this first slide, <laughs> the Digital, Digital English Theatre project has three partners. International House Belfast, which is a language school uh, based in Northern Ireland in the UK. Cantor University, which is the largest university in the Mekong Delta region of Vietnam. And the Hands Up Project, which is a UK registered charity that provides language training to refugees or people in areas of conflict, such as Gaza. The Hands Up Project was started by our friend and colleague Nick Bilborough, who's here with us today. And he's the member of our team who first demonstrated that drama, especially live drama, can be a powerful and motivating way of helping students of all ages and levels improve their language skills. Nick also demonstrated how recording and then disseminating live performances using readily accessible digital technology motivates learners to do their best work. And of course, these recordings can then also provide a useful learning resource for students elsewhere. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so the main objectives of our project um, were to provide English language teachers with a range of new skills and techniques and, and to help students improve their level of English. And we aim to, to achieve this by providing teachers and learners with the skills they need to use drama effectively in their language classes, even when these classes were happening online because of the restrictions imposed by the COVID pandemic. Next slide. There were three phases or stages to the project. The first of these was to train uh, groups of language teachers how to use digital English theatre methodology. The second phase was to help the teachers implement the methodology in their classes. And the third phase was to conduct some research in order to evaluate the impact of the project. The first training phase involved uh, 40 teachers. 30 of these were uh, university teachers and 10 were from high schools. And the aim was to see how teachers and students from different types of educational institutions would respond to the methodology. The second phase of the project involved over a thousand uh, students who were encouraged to write, perform and record their own short plays. These plays could be based on any theme the students chose. So we were also giving students the opportunity to be creative and to learn some other useful skills such as enhanced digital literacy. Next slide, please. During uh, the initial training phase, we also trained three university teachers, including our colleagues from Cantor University, so that they will be able to organize more training courses for other language teachers in the future. Next slide. Uh, Cantor University was in, also in charge of conducting research uh, into the project's impact. Uh, and we'll be hearing some of the results of this research a little later. But this is the sort of thing we wanted to measure. The number of teachers and students that took part in the project, the number of recordings they made, 
the improvement in learners' English skills that resulted from their participation and the impact of the project on motivation levels of both teachers and their students. We know that the power of drama combined with the power of modern technology can have a real impact on learner outcomes. And we think we've managed to demonstrate this through our project with real evidence, as you'll hear shortly from the other presenters. Next slide. Finally, our sincere thanks to the British Council's team in Vietnam for selecting our project for funding. We certainly couldn't have managed to run a project like this without their support. So again, many thanks. And that's it from me. Thanks very much, uh, Jonathan. That's great. That's a really good introduction to the project overall. And as Jonathan said, later on from uh, Miss Ian, we'll hear about some of the research findings, some of the initial research findings. But before we hear from Ian, we're going to hear from a teacher, Mr. Coy, and from a lecturer, uh, Miss Tuang, who are going to tell you a little bit about their experiences and their reflections on the project so far. So I'm going to hand over to Koi, and then again, as you're listening to Koi, if you have any questions, feel free to just pop them in the chat, and we'll have a little five minutes after Koi and after Tuang. Hopefully, we have five minutes where we can deal with any questions. And at the at the end, after we've heard from Koi, from Tuang, and from Ian, we can have a little bit more time to to field any questions to anyone from the panel this afternoon. Okay, Koi, over to you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so, so much for coming to our presentation today. It is a very big honor for me to be here to share my happy journey uh, when I apply this project at my school. So please wait uh, a little bit while I share my PowerPoint screen. Um, uh, if if you if you can see my PowerPoint slide, can you please uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart or some comments so that I can know that? OK. OK, I can see your reaction. Um, I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Koi and I am a novice teacher of two year experience. So I just uh, freshly graduated from Gantel University and I got a chance to work at my uh, former high school, which is Li Chong High School for the Gifted, based in Kangtai City. Um, for this project, uh, I think that this is uh, one of the biggest uh, memory in my life because it has transformed me a lot. And I would like to invite all of you to uh, review a little bit about my journey with this methodology. Um, so here is my outline for my presentation today. The first part of the story, or you can say it is the first chapter is about my students. And the next one is my colleagues. And the last one is a journey, uh, a reflection on the, the whole journey. Um, so before beginning my chapters of the journey, I would like to introduce some uh, a little bit of details about the, educa the English education system in Vietnam. So, before we use uh, the books, uh, this is, uh, we call it the seven year program, which means the students, they study English at the eight, um, uh, from uh, grade six and, and then they uh, go from six to grade 12. And from, uh, since I teach grade 11, I would like to show you something. Uh, in this book, we can also see the technique of role playing. And uh, this is for the, uh, the seven year program textbook. And uh, now at my school, we use the textbook, which is in the 10 year program. And in the 10 year program book, we can also see it is telling a story about friendship in a storytelling contest. Of course, we cannot uh, hold a real contest here. So it is a way for students to actually role play that they are in the contest. And here's the thing. These books are for the offline uh, protocol. Now we are in the lockdown of the COVID-19 pandemic. We cannot expect everything to uh, process as it is before. And here's another thing. My students, they are 
uh, sorry, they are the 10th and 11th craters. So they are usually, they are, they are born in 2005 and 2006. They are very typical Gen Zs. For Gen Zs, they are tech savvy and they are very smart people. You cannot expect them to like, okay, here is your homework, here is your assignment and do it. They will not accept that. They need some kind of thing that really motivate and engage them and actually keep their attention while they study. And I think that um, one quite bright thing about the COVID-19 pandemic is that we, I and my colleague have a chance to participate in a very meaningful project and very transformative one, which is the Hands Up Project, uh, hosted by Kentucky University with Prita Scoutshaw and International House of Belfast. Uh, we are very lucky because we got to be the trainees of uh, this project and later on we got to become teachers or instructors of this project and as you can see as teachers we are still very happy when we are in this project so whenever i feel happy doing something i want my students to feel the same and as i uh, told this story to my uh uh, supervisors and which is uh, the department of our uh, sorry which is the head of our department of English she said that okay so let's try it our school so she gave us a lot of support and while I um, discussed this project with my students and while I talk one day I got this message from my student and I know that something has happened so uh, while we exchange, we say thank you. My teammates are afraid that we're spending too much time for the script adaptation, and I uh, give them some advice. I give them some advice, and the thing that really uh, cap captivate my uh, attention is this message. Uh, this student is a typical Gen Z, and he or she sent me this message. I am also very grateful to be engaged in such an awesome project. As you know, it is very hard to get like the recognition from teenagers nowadays, and they gave me the word awesome. And I know that, OK, this project is something. And I think that I uh, am very blessed and very happy to uh, share with you today. And another thing about this is that uh, throughout my application with this project, they uh, they they are very engaged in this project. So as you can see here, here are some of the message. So I have answered all the three questions and the student versions of the teacher's order. However, what are we supposed to do with a second draft teacher? And as you can see here, the conversation is all about the process of learning. They do not care about the marks. They do not care about how I assess them. They just really want to learn. That is something that that um, not a lot of tasks can actually carry out because whenever you give something to students, they always ask about, OK, so how, how will I be assessed and what are the marks or the criteria I'll be like? And here's another thing. Uh, so this is Vietnamese I would like to introduce to you a lot. They say that, uh, dear teacher, our script uh, will be a little bit uh, very updated, very modern uh, compared to the original script, so it will be very different. So normally when we teach, we don't hear a lot of stories and a lot of feedback from students like this. They just do it and they don't talk to us much. And here they ask for my permission in order to be creative. They want it. They want them to be to uh, think outside the box. And as a teacher, I think that whenever we hear this kind of response from our students, I think that we have done something right. And here is another one. Uh, they also ask, uh, they are very, uh, I think they had a, a lot of fun, so they asked me, uh, can our group add in a behind the scene part in our clip and would it make the clip less serious? So here, they want to show that they have fun and they will really want to integrate their, in, their computational skill here. So whenever I hear that, just do it, right? And. Here is a thing that I would like to show you. So this is an original script from the talented teachers and students from Palestine to, from Welcome. It is named Welcome to Earth. Uh, briefly, it is about a group of aliens. They decided to come to Earth and they are in a conversation whether they would stay at Earth or, in, at Earth or not. And here is how my student adapted. So they are a group of boys. 
they are very creative, very dynamic. They kind of make an association from this script with a meeting between gods. They say that should we destroy humanity? And as you can see here, the characters are Zeus, Hercules, Hades, and Poseidon. They really give me a lot of insights into what students are capable of in terms of their thinking. And I, when I when I read when I read the script, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, how can it be so creative? I cannot make that kind of association, but here only at grade eleven, and they can make really interesting connection between what is given them and what they can create. So here is my um, my own personal conclusion from what my students uh, get after the project. First of all. I can confidently say that they have really enjoyed this project. I have never, I have heard, uh, I haven't heard any complaints from them or anything. There was, oh, the conversation was always about, could I do this? Could I do that? Could I do more? And uh, is it okay? Blah blah blah. Everything was about that. They're really engaged in it. And the thing that I really enjoy about this project is that I have built better rapport with my students, as you can see. The thing that we are working here is just a computer. It is very hard for us to communicate all things. But with this project, I can actually communicate with my students. And I, they have learned without thinking much about grades. They actually told me that uh, although they know that this uh, will be created, but they, kind, they say that this is, a, they, this is the own word. It is very creative when they can actually learn without thinking much about grades. I was shocked when I hear that. And of course, they have developed their language competency. So uh, this is a way that is, I think this is a very good way for students to develop the listening and speaking. And when they adapt the script from the original one, they have to read it and then they have to rewrite it. Not many tasks in the textbook can actually engage students in learning integratively, integratively like this kind of project. And of course, they are actually engaged in learning. They are in charge of their own learning process. I am just there to instruct. I am just there to give them some guidance and I do not take control. They are the one who take responsibility and the full control of their own learning. And uh, that is the, uh, the first chapter of my journey. And I would like to move on to the next chapter. The next chapter is about us. Uh, as we all aware that teaching is not a very pleasing or it's not an easy job. Sometimes we are like this after school. We are completely beat, we are exhausted, and even now we are in the COVID-19 lockdown. Everything seems to be more stressful and we have to be like using, uh, we have to be using our computer throughout the whole day. And to think that after a very long day of teaching, it is quite um, unimaginable to talk about the things that are happening in our classroom. But this is not the case with this project. I have had great conversations with my colleagues about this kind of project outside of class time. So here is a teacher. So we discussed it after she uh, attended and observed my classroom. She said that I think that uh, we should allow students to write their own script. And I think that they are very creative. So Sang Tao is a Vietnamese equivalent for creative and to and while I teach offline, I don't hear this kind. I didn't hear this kind of works when I uh, talk to my colleagues. But when this project appear in our life and it bless us with these kind of great messages, I think that the teachers also see something about this kind of project. And here is another teacher. She asked me, uh, "Hey, uh, my students, they are very great." They may make some mistakes in pronunciation, but they use re really great animations and it makes the uh, play really effective. It's so it is so fun when you look at them. And here's the thing. Uh, sometimes it is uh, very stressing whenever you share something with other teacher. But here this teacher asked me, do you want to see the students? Uh, my students clip, I would love to see to share it with you. So I think that this is also a great way for us to build um, rapport with other colleagues. And again, she mentioned creative.
I think this work is uh, one of the highlights of this project. And here is my own conclusion. So my colleagues, they can also spot the impacts of this project. And thanks to this project, we can all see what students are capable of, right? And to um, wrap up uh, my journey with this project, here is something that I would like to share. First of all, I was uh, very lucky to be a participant of this project uh, at uh, last May, uh, since the, the end of the last semester, and I got a chance to become a trainer so that I can share my experience and also the love for this project with the other teachers in uh, some other places. And the last one is that I got to share this feeling of happiness with my students. So uh, what could a, a novice teacher like me ask for more? This is uh, like one of the best things that has have ever happened to me. And um, so here is the thing about methodology. Sometimes uh, it is practical, but I think that it will be better if it, is, if it is supported by a framework. And I am also very pleased to be a student at Gunther University because when I was a student there, I got a chance to study um, project-based learning course and in this course, we got to read a very insightful and interesting uh, article by uh, Dr. Allen and Dr. Stoller, which is maximizing the benefits of project work in foreign language classroom. So you can uh, copy this and then you can go online and search for it. So here are the 10 steps that I have um, adapted. And oh no, uh, sorry, this is the direct citation. So here is the framework which I used in order to apply it in my uh, classroom. So I am not here to tell you like, oh, here's how you must do it. So this is just a suggestion for you to uh, uh, to see and as a reference for you, because in your uh, practical, in your real situation, I'm not sure whether my suggestion would work or not. So this is just a humble suggestion, a framework for us to rely on and work on. Uh, actually, I have not done like full 10 steps of it. Some steps I combine. So uh, I think I should sh show you the full version so that you can actually uh, see it and implement it in your own way. Um, and I'm just here to show you what are some ways I use to um, make these projects uh, go quite smoothly. The first thing is that we are now working online a lot. So we need something to work as an archive for us to interact and for us to keep the student work. So I use a uh, Google Drive uh, and I classify it into a big file called the Digital Theater Project at my school. And for the class that uh, uh, I am like an, I co-teach and I supervise and I'm a an, uh, main instructor. I leave it here and I I'm quite, I, I quite like colors, so I put a lot of colors here, so it is not. Um, a compulsory things to do, so it's up to, it's up to you. And for each of the file, I use um, Google Doc. Google Doc is a really great thing. It actually encourages students to rethink about their um, learning. So as you can see here, I use the word portfolio. So they are allowed and they are encouraged to use a lot of drafts here. And I, I believe in the power of questions. Sometimes when we speak a lot, but uh, not many students can actually understand us. Instead, give them great questions to think about. So the first step is I give them some original pieces and give them some techniques and then I ask them to choose it. And while I ask them to choose, I give them some things for them to think like, what do you like about it? Is it a Vietnamese context? Because I believe that although we learn English, but we are still Vietnamese. So we have to localize it. And uh, the next thing I ask them is, what could you do to make it more relevant to our context? And also I put some sample videos here. This is a really great way because whenever they have something, they can put questions here and I can and they notify me and I could go in there and interact with them. So Google Docs is a really great choice. And um, since they use Google Docs, here is something I would like to share with you. Since uh, the exercises and the assignments in the textbook, it doesn't have, it doesn't show a lot of encouragement in their uh, organic learning process. This one is really great because this is their first draft. So uh, sorry for very small words because I don't want to uh, show much personal information here, but I, I can tell you, for example, like this is the first draft. 
they do not know they did not know what to do uh, at first so they just leave the original version there and after our discussion here is the second draft they know that okay so we need to have some role management here so who will play who and they need to add some of their suggestion and after some further discussion they think that uh, can I ask one more draft and I say okay and here is the thing about it you give your students chances to learn and you give your students chances to revise their work which is something that is very authentic like when you are writing an email you keep writing and then you keep editing so I think that this is a really good project to show students that learning is a process it's not about the product and one more thing I would like to share with you in the first draft they just leave everything there and in the third draft they are aware of giving credit to the owner so what I love about this is that they say that they're just an adapted version so here's the work today our group is going to do the nobody can destroy your dreams play this play was adapted so they are learning to give credit to the original writers of this script and um, I think why I really encourage all of you to try this kind of project is that, as you can see in the picture here, each student can find their own learning process with this kind of project. And not many projects in the COVID-19 pandemic now can actually do this. And I have seen my student happiness and joy joyfulness and also my own when I apply this kind of project. So I hope that with my sharing, I can actually encourage all of you to uh, try this project at your um, school or your university or your centers. And thank you so much for uh, being by my side when I tell my story. And I hope that there's still time for some Q&A. Um, thank, thank you so much. Thanks very much, Koi. And I love all the applause coming in. We have over, over 100 people now on the webinar, which is fantastic. So it's great Thank to you. see all, all the applause. I, I can only add my own applause as well to that. Uh, some amazing comments coming in as well in the chat. Koi from Mr. D. Koi, your pride in what you have achieved is so visual. A huge congratulations to you and this project. From Thank Marina so from Vivexcel, a wonderful example of creative co-creation. Yeah. Some great points coming in from Nick as well from the Hands Up project. And I think, yeah, I can only echo that. It's just fantastic to see the positivity, the creativity, the motivation, word, using words like authentic, focusing yes. on the process, not the product. It's, yeah. it's every, as you say, I love the fact that you're talking about, you know, we, we always, all teachers, no matter which country you're in or wh where you're talking to teachers, one of the main things teachers say is, how can I motivate my students? How yeah. can I engage my students? How can I make learning English fun? And just from your the last 15, 20 minutes, you've really shown some fantastic examples of that. It's amazing. Thank uh, you. So thanks so much for sharing. Thanks to everybody for the for the comments in the chat as well. Do we have any questions? Um, I'm just keeping my eye on the. Oh, is I can see a hand up. I think if anybody has a hand up, uh, Ta Tang Tan has had a hand up right from the very beginning. Do you have a question, Quinn? Did you ever get? A, I know you asked for a question. Sorry, I, I didn't see any question. No, I didn't. Thanks, Queen. Oh, uh, <laughs> there is Queen. a question. There is a question in the chat box. Uh, may I read it and answer it? Sure, please. Okay. Please do. Uh, so, uh, a guest from our chat box asked, uh, "Koi, did you have many roadblocks along the way, and what helped you to remove them?" Um, so, the things that uh, helped me to remove all of them are these messages. Like. Uh, I feel the energy from them and I feel the positivities and actually the difference that this project can make. And so I think that it is very rewarding for me to uh, actually to deal with all the problems. And the, act, um, the thing that really pops up a lot is the internet connection really, because uh, in Vietnam right now, I think this is, I'm not sure about the other places, but in Vietnam right now, uh, the internet connection is quite slow. And for some students, they do not have like a laptop here. So I just said, OK, just you, uh, your mobile phone or you can uh, you ask for some like your neighbors or something like that. But uh, the thing is that they do not ask me um, much about the problems because this is a very encouraging and 
this kind of project actually i i think uh, I hope our teachers from Indonesia can uh, are, are here because this is a project that can actually nurture autonomous learners. Like mm. I, I expect a lot of problems would arise, but when I ask them, they just say, okay, we can do it. Don't worry, teacher. It was like, oh, well, I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that's a really good. I think that's a really yeah. good point, Coy. Because I like when at the beginning in your session as well, when you said, "We forget like the Gen Z kids. Yeah. They're tech savvy. They're more tech savvy than most of us on this call, probably." Yeah. <laughs> so it's amazing. As digital natives, it's amazing the things they can do. Of course, they have challenges maybe with access to laptops, devices, to, mm -hmm. to the to the data. You know, and that costs money as well, especially if they're they're in kind of rural or you know uh, remote areas we have to yeah. think about that in terms of access and inclusivity but once they have that access they certainly seem to have the uh, the the as you say the creativity uh, yeah. and they respond they respond so positively as a result of that which is fantastic to see yeah yeah um thanks coy thanks so much do we have any other questions from anybody i'm just look, keeping my eye on the chat um there is one participant who's raised his or her hand? Yeah, no, that's that's. I think that's a mistake from early on. <laughs> oh, okay. We and asked we and asked them asked them to ask put their question in the chat, but they haven't yet. Um, okay, so if you can, yeah, if they can re reduce or re what's the word? Lower your hand. That would be great. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Thanks very much, Coy. Well, hopefully we'll have some time at the end as well for some general general questions. Thanks for that introduction and for sharing uh, your journey. Yeah. your student's journey and your teaching colleague's journey. That was a really nice way to start start this afternoon. Yeah, okay, I, so much. I'm going to hand over now, moving from the, from the teacher perspective to the lecturer perspective. So now we're going to hear from Tu Anne, who's going to share some of her, her ideas as well. She's got a really interesting presentation for us all. Over to you, Tu Anne. Thank you very much, uh, Davide. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, maybe morning, evening, in order, places in the world. And thank you, Pritis of Kaushal, International House Belfast and the Hands Up Project Nick and Kanta University to give me this great honor to join the training and to be here and share my experience in applying the digital theater in my lesson. Um, just a moment, I'll share my slide now. <clears throat> yeah, uh, do you guys see it? I think it's coming. Yes, yeah. it's there. It's there. It's there to Wang. I, um, first, I would like to share uh, me and my students' story, um, what challenges we both got and how to solve it. Uh, what did we both achieve? Last one is the reflection on this method in applying for students at my school. Um, <clears throat> Well, the target students are non-English major, and they are on around 18 to 20 years old. I apply it on five classes. Uh, three classes are at uh, elementary level, and two orders are pre-intermediate and intermediate level. So most of them consider English uh, a burden, and they are afraid of speaking because of their limited lexical resources, pronunciation, and shy everything and um, so uh, at the age of 18 uh, from 18 to 22 what strengths do students have please can you type your answer at the, at the chat box Yeah, you got to learn. Yeah, so young and curious creativity. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and yes, young enthusiastic. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and what challenges do you think that student may get? Yeah, type your answer in the chat box, please. Time consuming, right? 
too many distractions. Yeah, easy to get bored. Thank you. Uh, yes, the problem they've got here is the lack of confidence, shy, nervous, anxiety. They're not confident about themselves speaking English language in front of people. And sh shy, uh, nervous, and anxiety, the students feel uncomfortable to con and confused in communicating in English. Most of students talk to me that they feel feared of making mistakes in speaking, that uh, their classmates laugh at them and looking silly in front of their mates even criticize them in the classroom. Um, they also lack of motivation in themselves. Motivation can be driven by teachers, classmates, but the problem is that they didn't motivate them uh, very well to speak English. That means they didn't take interest in speaking and even learning English. <clears throat> and the last one, but it is also the most big challenge is the biggest challenge is common grammatical mistake. Mostly students face in speaking. Learning English grammar is very difficult for students. In speaking English language, mostly the students make grammar mistakes. Usually students make mistakes in tense, uh, active and passive and vocabulary during speaking English language. They use the wrong tense. Uh, sometimes they want to speak in the past tense, but they used to speak in the present tense instead of the past tense. Then I think, oh my God, what can I do? <laughs> there are much more challenges than I thought and how to solve it. <clears throat> and this is my solutions and my tip. The eye and show them example, set up the stage to uh, choose and write script practice pronunciation, working with script and create remote theater. And I will show you in details now. <clears throat> Breaking the ice, um, we can use it at the beginning of the lesson. <clears throat> or school year, or when the class starts to lose concentration. They also have enriched vocabulary, revision, uh, remind them target structures, improve pronunciation. I started with uh, passing objects like um, at the beginning of uh, the school year. Uh, they have to pass any object they have. They can hand on it, uh, pass it to all the classmates via the screen, this camera. Yeah. What they would like orders to, they have to introduce uh, their name, what they would like orders to remember them, uh, and their hometown. So on the screenshot, you can see I asked them to imagine and act out three activities in their daily life using body language. Uh, and all the groups will get what activity it is. Um, then I show them sample video, uh, which was performed by me and my colleagues to uh, introduce the project, how we act and how symbodies they were. Yeah, they were very excited when they saw me in the clip. And yeah, then I show them um, how to set the stage, set up the stage online. Um, what I show them on and off the stage, change background, a uh, lot of different to show off at a state at a remote theater. And um, <clears throat> facial expression is the most important, like uh, looking at the camera and looking at the camera and talk and act. Like no one see you, but the audience feel that you are looking at them. Yeah, we can use a mask or puppets. <clears throat> then I give them the existing uh, script. Of I give it for own level, and then I let them. I have to let them to read the content and let them write. For elementary level, uh, they can add more characters, more dialogue, or write new ending so that everyone in the group can talk and can act. 
for higher level, um, they can write new scripts, change the content or edit. And And practice pronunciation. Mm -hmm. We practice on, right. Besides learning in class with teacher, they can practice at home by themselves on Google Meet because it shows the subtitle when you read it. Uh, Elsa speak uh, Flipgrid, even Zello. You know, uh, they sent me the word or phrases that I couldn't pronounce correctly. I in, then I recorded and instructed them and sent back to them. <clears throat> then we work with script. Uh, analyze, explain, taking note. Um, I correct the script, uh, what they wrote. Uh, I started from the extraction then to full scripts. And physical theater. <clears throat> show them basic gesture in acting, using hand, uh, facial expression, voice, <laughs> intonation. And we practice in class together. <clears throat> As you can see on the screen, this is an extract from a sheep and sheep textbook. Instead of putting them in group, listen and uh, fill in the blanks, I acted with them. Before showing this task, I asked them, uh, do I uh, copycat what I was doing and saying, then repeat it and speed up. Then I put them in a group, the breakout room, uh, to fill in the blanks, practice, and then they go back to the main room and enact the dialogue. <clears throat> so it is not about my solutions and tips. So. So what's the result that me and my student got? This is the feedback I got from them. Uh, now I feel more confident to communicate with the native speakers. And whenever I read an, a word and it show me the correct uh, subtitle, I was so happy as I won a lottery. And now I feel confidence in my pronunciation and I have more friends because I didn't know anyone. Uh, as you know that um, non-English major student at university, they from different major and they learn together in the class, only English subject. <clears throat> so that's why they didn't know before. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks to this the drama activity, I can get full mark in speaking test. And me too, even though I got, I, max, uh, I usually max BTEC in pronunciation. <clears throat> and this is the interview, group interview uh, of my student after the honor. Um, so, well, we did this activity. Well, in terms of English learning, it's undeniable that our English level has been improved a lot through on the practice while uh, take, making video and especially my listening skills and speaking skills. Mm -hmm. Well, besides, uh, because of many problems arising throughout the activity, so it really sharpens our uh, problem solving skills and of course teamwork skills. Um, yeah, you can watch the clips of uh, you can watch all the clips of uh, uh, the student on our official page by searching uh, Digital English Theatre Project 2021 on Facebook, or you can use your phone to scan the QR. Yeah, <clears throat> don't worry, um, it will be shown again in the next report of my colleague. But, um, not before and. Um, after using drama in teaching. Sorry. Um, this is my um, sharing. 
before and after using uh, drama in teaching, we sent students survey. And this is what I got from my point of view after weeks working with non-English major students. Uh, in the next report, my colleague uh, will show you statistic and more detail. <laughs> okay, some student from elementary level. <clears throat> they have been studying with me for two semesters. So it, I, I can see their improvement clearly uh, in English language proficiency, absorbed new knowledge uh, about culture, history, um, moral lessons. Besides, they, they have to work in groups every Everyone is uh, accountable for their characters in the play. <clears throat> so regarding to um, uh, motivation, it is a, a vital to create an enjoyable learning environment. When I instructed them to perform a play and enact a dialogue, I could observe and mirror uh, progressively active participations enthusiasms, dynamism, and increased social interaction. <clears throat> Oops. But only one but not least important problem during my teaching, and I think we all have ever experienced is that low bandwidth internet connection <clears throat> uh, or power off. <clears throat> so and I saw that I let my student uh, make the clips themselves and post it on Flipgrid where I can store their clips and they can check their pronunciation after 10 minutes of posting. <clears throat> To uh, sum up, drama activities bring out the great output of authentic, holistic language through uh, interactive, hands-off activities that are highly meaningful to young learners. Uh, we teachers as, the, as in the roles of trainers, monitors, guiders, uh, learners will uh, undoubtedly profit from the integration of drama into classrooms. Yeah, that is. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tuang. That's really, really interesting. Fascinating, fascinating uh, uh, solutions there. I really liked your your list of solutions that you shared on the screen with us, and you took you guided us through. Um, it was also really interesting to hear you talk about the, the confidence. And again, I think many of the comments as well when you asked the question at the beginning. You know, teenagers they need to develop their confidence, but also you were talking about, you know, maybe grammar mistakes and practicing their pronunciation. So that balance, I think, between accuracy, accuracy of grammar, accuracy of vocabulary, accuracy of pronunciation, balancing that with the fluency. We often talk about accuracy and fluency in, in speaking. Um, and the, the, obviously the fluency, we're looking at confidence, confidence building among students. So it was really interesting to hear you kind of touch on many of those points through your through your presentation and through your sharing. Um, do we have any questions from anybody um, for uh, Tuang before we move on to our final speaker this afternoon? I can't see any questions. I've been monitoring Correct. the chats and seeing lots of lots of nice comments for you there, Tuang. You can if you when you have a chance to read through. Um, also, Tuang, you showed a couple of video clips. I know, and also it's great. Thanks, Ian, for sharing the the link to the Facebook as well as the QR code. That's really useful. Definitely, I think encourage people. And I think Ian's going to talk about that in in just a moment. Oh, we have a question for you from Ziam, I think. Ziam or Diem? Uh, Ziam, which yeah. Uh, which asks, do your student use the digital tutor project as well as some student video? Into? Yeah, the, um, we, uh, I taught them on Zoom and they recorded their played on Zoom too because we tested from Google Meet, from Team and Zoom and we found that Zoom is, was the best one. <laughs> In on and off the stage, and they can hide the 
camera, uh, sorry, they can hide uh, non-video participation participants like uh, <clears throat> on the stage. There are at that time only two people on the stage, so they can off the orders off the camera without showing their profile or picture. <clears throat> so, so then we decided to use uh, Zoom. <clears throat> yeah. And there's another question from Mr. D. Uh, to Ang, what was the biggest improvement you had in the level of the students' English? Yeah, from the elementary uh, students because they study with me in uh, two semesters. I, I also give them uh, I also give them big feedback because I clearly see their improvement in pronunciation, and I can use symbol question symbol sense to chat with me. Uh, Great, thanks. They feel they felt like uh, the feedback I, I show on the screen. It's uh, it, it's written in Vietnamese, but some of them, uh, most of them, not some, most of them say that they felt confident to communicate with uh, native speakers and their uh, yeah uh, yeah they feel confident and and, and they can apply those question sense in real life. <clears throat> All right, thanks to and we've got a question from Nick as well. Nick, uh, am I unmuted now? Can you hear me? You're, you're, we, can, we can hear you. Yes, brilliant, brilliant. So, um, Antran, that was fantastic. Um, and I'm just really interested in the kind of reformulation that you're doing when students write something in the plays and then you change it, you give them a suggested alternative. Yeah. And I think that's really getting to the heart of learning when you're really helping them improve their writing. And I just wonder if you encounter any resistance from students when you change what they've written and give them other things. So how, how do they respond to that? Uh, they respond via emails. But I mean, do they do they do they feel comfortable with you changing yeah. their text? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I asked them, um, those students who wrote new script, I asked them to send me and I'll have a look and someone, I didn't ask them to send, but they sent to ask me for suggestion. Yeah, yeah, because they want to know a better way of saying things. They want yeah, to have yeah. To, yeah, yeah, great, yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. I think that go, that also builds on the what Coy was saying as well before about you that it, you know the process of write the process of writing and then drafting the script and then putting that into the performance with the speaking with the pronunciation practice. So again, that mix of uh, fluency and accuracy, which leads to our last question. Penny Sun has asked a very good question. Hi, Tuang. How do you balance fluency and accuracy? Thank you, Penny. That was my that was going to be my final question as well. <laughs> to Tuang. <laughs> so, excellent question, Penny. Yeah, they practiced. Um, we have uh, before they the due day I give them. Uh, we have uh, two weeks rehearsal, rehearsal, and they for elementary level. Um, they read the, the script, but I ask them, do, do not learn by your heart. <laughs> Understand uh, it. Okay. Understand it. Yeah, the, the, the dialogue, maybe it's, uh, it's not word by word like mm -hmm. what you wrote, but you understand it and say it so that you can act it naturally. So communicating the meaning, not just yeah. the words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that goes back to what you were saying, as, and Nick was saying as well in the chat about body language, bringing all of those non-verbal as well as verbal communication into the mix in terms of uh, confidence building and communication as well, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That's really interesting. Thanks. Thanks to Wang. Uh, I'm just mindful of time. We've just gone over 3.30 and we have one more uh, present presenter presentation today. Um, so with that, thanks very much to Wang. That was really, really interesting. And I'm sure there's even more questions. So do have a look in the chat. Um, but finally this afternoon, last but definitely not least, um, Miss Ian from Kanto University, who worked very closely with Nick and Jonathan on the project and developing the project. Ian, over to you. 
I think you're on mute, Ian. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my slide, so it may take some time. Yeah. OK, so good afternoon. I am excited to see all um, participants and audience over here. Um, I'm Ying. Uh, my full name is Phu Huang Ying, and I come from Kung Tu University. I was lucky to uh, to be invited by uh, Jonathan from IH Belfast to cooperate, and he is he was the one who uh, plan uh, all the staff over here along with uh, Nick. So thank you for the opportunity uh, because you chose Gunther University. OK, so I'm going to present the impact of digital English theater uh, from the view of teacher and student. So this is kind of statistic and data uh, to prove that uh, the success of uh, digital theater does not come from only one or two teacher, but come from a lecture uh, lecture group of teacher and student right okay so uh in my presentation i'm going to uh, introduce you a little bit about the project and then uh do a little bit of literature review and then uh, i will uh, present the methodology uh, that we have to collect the data for our research and then the findings conclusion and suggest suggestion for teacher right OK, so as you have heard from the beginning, these are the basic information about the project. It is funded by British Council and there are three partners and we train teacher, train student and on activity conducted online. And uh, our project was conducted during the time uh, that Vietnam uh, had to experience the pandemic uh, quite seriously and everybody has to stay home. We could not go out uh, or go to school. So uh, regarding literature, I will present it shortly over here. So there are various studies by different authors that review grammar technique plays a role in helping learners learn a language, either that's it, their mother tongue or their a foreign language or a, a second language, right? Uh, however, when I search the literature in the Vietnam context, we have very few study of the topic. Uh, so there are only three uh, study that we can find in the literature. So about the methodology, uh, there are two research questions that we ask ourselves. The first one is what are the teacher perception of the impact of trauma technique in an English classroom? And the second one is what are student perception of the impact of trauma technique in an English classroom? We want to have the perspective of both the teacher and the student. OK, so we have two research tools over here. We have a questionnaire, which is uh, um, consists of items uh, um, uh, built on five point Likert scale, and we have the interview protocol. But because of the limitation of the presentation, I will not present the data from the interview uh, because my, it's more or, less, um, more or less a shadowing uh, what Duan and Koi have just shared you. We got excited. Uh, comments from teacher and a very positive comment from the student regarding the uh, benefits that uh, trauma technique brings to them. Okay, so these are the teacher participants. We have a total of 40 teachers participating in the project and uh, some of them are very young, maybe two of them I think, uh, are under 30, uh, but most of them are more than 40 and you know that when we are more than 40 it's kind of uh, difficult to to change to something new uh we we are comfortable with with our old teaching method and we feel that okay uh we are successful with it why should we change but but in the project uh we are happy to uh receive the welcome uh, uh, the teacher who are over 40, right? So I would like to to send my thankfulness to the teacher who agreed to participate in the project and the one who spent time with your student. So look at Koi works and Duan works. You can see that they have to work extra. Uh, but I hope that they they had fun from doing the job. And when you had fun with doing the job, you don't feel that you're working anymore, right? So so that's that's I uh, I'm expecting the um, participants are having. Right. So we have a variety of groups. So we have a teacher with BA degree, with master degree, and some um, one tour of them are from uh, with PhD degree. And we have most of the teacher have more than 10 years of uh, teaching experience. But, but to tell the truth, very few of them have experience with, with teaching English using the trauma technique, right? 
OK, so let's move on to the next slide. So these are the student participants. Uh, we are we have a variety group of students. Uh, some of them uh, come from 17% uh, of them are English major uh, high school students. So we have uh, we have invited um, some uh, high school for the gifted. And uh, finally, in the second stage of the project, only two schools, that is Lee Tự Trọng High School from Cần Thơ City and Nguyễn Thị Minh Khai High School from Sóc Trang City uh, continue with the second stage of the project. Uh, the second group of learners are non-English major school students uh, with a count for 8%. And then we have uh, English major student 21%, and then we have non-English major university student, uh, which account for 30% uh, of our participants. And um, very interestingly, we have adult learner. These are uh, the ones who already, uh, already graduated from uh, university, and they are coming back to study uh, English as their second degree. So as I mentioned earlier, so we have uh, participants from different schools over here, uh, from university and from high school over here. Okay, regarding the uh, another uh, demographic information about student participants, so we have a learner, most of the learner are from 18 to 20 years old, right? 23% uh, 23 of them are from high school, so they're under 18. And uh, then we have 9% of above uh, 20 years old, right? And regarding gender, most of our learners are female uh, and it's quite uh, understandable because when it comes to language, it's a common in research that mostly uh, we have a female coming to uh, language rather than to other uh, fields. OK, so these are the interventions. So we have uh, six weeks. Uh, of intervention uh, that lasts for six sessions. Uh, some teacher implemented in five weeks, some of them implemented in six weeks, and the process of uh, implementation uh, from a technique in the classroom um, have been mentioned by Koi and Tuan, uh, so I will go quickly over it. Right. Okay, so let's come to the uh, findings. So what have we got, right? So these are the findings regarding the overall impact of the trauma technique over the student. So we have four columns over here and on the left you can have the teacher perception and on the right you have student perception. With teacher perception, we uh, unfortunately we didn't have a brain test. We only have uh, the post test after the teacher actually uh, implemented uh, drama technique in the classroom. But with uh, student data, you can see that uh, there is improvement between the pre-test and post-test. And with the data from 1,215 students, you can see that this change is quite big. And I run um, pair sample t-test, and we find that most of our uh, of the improvement are significant statistically, right? That's mean uh, the p-value is smaller than uh, z uh, 0.05. So that's interesting. This is the overall impact. And then we go through the impact on linguistic competence. So these are the items we ask about the teacher evaluation regarding the uh, potential that um, digit, uh, trauma technique uh, impact on the student uh, linguistic competence. And you can see that uh, they have very positive uh, perception. You can see that all of their answers uh, are above three and uh, many of them are above four in the Likert scale of five, in which uh, one mean totally disagree and number five mean totally agree. Yeah. OK, our similar findings can be found among students, right? So you can see that students agree that after five or six weeks of learning with digital uh, English theater, they improve their speaking skill, listening skill, reading skill, writing skill, grammar knowledge, pronunciation, and uh, they, they find that uh, they have the opportunity to use language in more meaningful uh, situation. And you can see that the data is above four, uh, which is quite high, right? And uh, the most important thing is that they feel that they can learn new vocabulary by using them and understand them uh, from the context and use them in a creative way in the grammar. How about the impact on skills? So uh, teachers also have very positive perception regarding the impact of the trauma technique on the student's skill. 
and so uh, do the student, right? So these are the improvement that you can see uh, after five or six weeks of implementation. So students uh, agree that uh, trauma technique help them uh, to foster problem solving skill, improve their communication skill, develop critical thinking skill, improve student collaboration skill, and uh, um, stimulate students to learn in many physical skills as well as develop uh, student intercultural competence. And you can see that the one uh, which get the highest agreement is with improved student collaboration skill. So that can be found uh, in uh, Hoi and Duan uh, uh, reflection, where you can see that students work with one another, uh, they work uh, outside the classroom and they collaborate and then they change, they revise a lot of things. So that clearly uh, shown here among the, the students in the project, uh, more than 1,000, more than 1,200 students, right? So we outreach the number that we uh, target at the beginning. At the beginning, we, we hope that we have 800 to 1,000, but now we have more than 1,200 students. Uh, regarding the impact on classroom practice, you can see uh, that the data over here is even more positive than other impact. More specifically, you can see that uh, it encouraged students to take a more role and responsibility in the process of learning. Uh, this is what Koi and Tuan has just shared with you, right? So they don't just come into the classroom, uh, even virtual classroom, and then learn and then they go home and don't learn anymore but they have to uh, to take more role and responsibility, right? Uh, it also strengthened the student willingness to work constructively and seriously. It stimulates students to participate in the learning process. It encourages students to overcome the problem of fear. As you can see that uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the Facebook page that we set up, you can see that students uh, are very confidently performing their, uh, their, their, their play, right? Uh, and more clips are coming uh, from other teachers in the project. However, we, we need to uh, have a consent form from, from the parents of a student under 18 until we can publish them. I can't wait to, to publish them on our uh, Facebook, right? Uh, it also has to provide students with opportunity to discuss sensitive topics. So you can see that uh, if you look at our uh, Facebook, you can see that there are a lot of plays about like uh, gender equality, about uh, war, about um, uh, how to keep peace, how to live harmoniously with other people. So, so these are the things we don't usually discuss in our English classroom because in English classroom, we have the fixed topic provided by book writer, but with digital English theater, we can explore different topics and and uh, with different script, I would like to, to send my thankfulness to teacher from uh, Palestine uh, that have written uh, some of the script over here. So you can see that uh, it's your choice that is the play where, where the girl fight for their own happiness or a uh, welcome to her where um, people decided that they have to, uh, to, to uh, give up uh, weapons and live with one another happily, right? So these are the things we don't mention or we try to avoid or we don't have a chance to talk. But with the Shito in the theater, we can do it. You can, you you may find some interesting place over here, right? Okay, and it also helps shy students to be more active in their trauma uh, participation. So they are uh, in their own comfortable zone in their home and then interact with other people uh, via um, uh, Zoom and then they feel more confident in their home, but they can still uh, be uh, able to to speak a language. And, and recent study have shown that uh, people become more confident when they study online, uh, when they speak online. Uh, there are different reasons, but one of the reasons is that they are in their comfortable uh, area, something like that, right? Uh, the next benefit regarding classroom practice is that uh, digital English theater create a vibrant, familiar, and enjoyable environment for both student and teacher. So you can see how much 
call in to and enjoy their class, right? So, so that's it, the thing that we can see uh, shadowing here uh, with the very high perception from the student, right? And it had reached a gap between classroom and real life situation when the student doing the role playing or doing the drama. This is something that they say and do in real life. So that's that's really uh, impressive about the impact on on classroom practice. So among the different aspects that we uh, explore, it's seen that uh, impact on classroom practice is something that we have the highest uh, or the, the most positive perception from both the teacher and learner. So let's move on to the other impacts. So we can see that other impact that we can find from the digital English tutor is that it can help the student or it can help the teacher to explore the potential of creative student. Uh, so uh, I hope you have some time to to watch our clip. Uh, I I have to to say, oh my God, some time, right? Because I cannot imagine how creative student could be with their uh, their clips. So you can see that they are very professional. They are very creative, and as Cole mentioned, they can even make a new, uh, completely new version of the script from what they have got. Uh, so this is the thing that we can find uh, receiving the most positive uh, comment from the teacher. The second impact, uh, all the impact over here is that it gives students opportunity to express their thought, emotion and feeling. With their uh, play, they can kind of comfortable. They don't speak in an artificial environment, but is it also artificial? But with this artificial environment, is it more authentic? Because they can uh, interact like they are talking to people in real life. Right. And it helps students to become more confident in using English and it can encourage students in creativity. Once again, creativity is something that I want to uh, focus on when we talk about digital English tutor. Right. And it boosts students' imaginative growth. Right. So you can see uh, from Koi a presentation or uh, from Duan presentation or you can find more in the clips that uh, we posted on our on our Facebook. Uh, they um, they are very creative and they are very imaginative in their place and their performance and I love that, right? So uh, the perception of the student are the same. You can see that uh, after five or six weeks, you can see the improvement uh, from uh, under four to more than four, right? Uh, in the in the five point Likert scale, and um, that that make us very happy. Yeah. So here are some uh, brief conclusion. The first one is that drama technique has great potential in English language classroom. It helps students to develop their linguistic competence. It helps students to develop many other skills, sub skill. It have uh, improved the classroom practice and other things. So you can see that uh, we are very happy with with the findings over here, right? And um, with the diverse diversity of our participants, you can see that it can be implemented with various groups of learners. So at first, when Jonathan and Nick suggested that we have that project, they wanted to implement it with a student, secondary school student or upper secondary school student. But I suggest that maybe, maybe university students are also uh, good uh, target group, so we, we decided to change because at that time we think that uh, with secondary school uh, and, or upper secondary school, maybe the teacher are too busy teaching or following the curriculum. They don't have time for extra curriculum activity. But with here you can see that high school student, uh, non-major, non-English major student, English major student, and even adult learner can do, um, can, can, um, can use the, the drama technique and uh, benefit from it, right? And especially, uh, I think that it, the universe sent send the project to us just in time, that you can see that uh, before we conducted any, or we implemented anything in our classroom, uh, everything is normal in Vietnam, we can go out, we can interact, we can go to the coffee shop, we can teach in the classroom. But at the second stage of the project, when we about to when we was to start our project, then uh, the thing is getting more serious and then uh, digital. We, we have no choice but doing everything online and and it worked. 
it works actually, and and we are happy about that. So so it it seems that when uh, we are put in a situation that we have no choice, then this can boost our uh, creativity and it boost our um, ability a lot, right? So it's a fun way to learn if especially in the context of COVID nineteen pandemic. So uh, Koi and uh, Duan he just have mentioned uh, several uh, suggestions on how to implement the project successfully in their classroom. Here are some of my suggestions, right? Uh, so the first one is that um, the, the most important, I think the most important uh, element to make uh, the, the drama technique or the implementation successful need is support from school authority. So among, uh, I would like to send my thankfulness to uh, Go Ngo Min Chau, uh, the the head of the Department of English in Little Drum High School. She very she was very supportive, and is very supportive. That that why you can see that we have a lot of participants from Little Drum High School, uh, both for uh, English major and non English major high school student. Right. So with great support from the school authority, uh, it makes everything much easier. You create uh, the. Uh, interaction between teacher, you create a comfortable atmosphere of exchanging idea among the teacher, and you create a kind of positive energy for the student to implement the project in the classroom. So, so this is the most important uh, element. The second one is that um, in the teacher should believe in a successful implementation of trauma technique in the classroom. So uh, from my teaching experience, most of, for most of us, it seems that it's far from us first. If we want our classroom to be successful, we should have a belief that it will be successful, right? So uh, so if you think that this one is a useful technique, you have to believe in it first. And uh, if you believe in us, you can always find a way to make uh, the technique successful in your classroom, right? And the last uh, suggestion or the last comment I would like to uh, leave to the audience today is that um, students today can be very active and creative in their learning process. Trust them. Trust them, right? Uh, important things should be repeated three times. Trust them, right? So you can see from the products of our project, the students are very creative, are very creative, and they are uh, active and creative, and they enjoy the experience. So trust them. If you give them the opportunity to learn, then they will learn. Uh, so thank you very much for the break, uh, for listening. So this is the link to our uh, project, and I have sent it via uh, the chat box. And I I hope that in the coming weeks you will see more plays performed by our students from Cần Thơ University, from Nong Thap University, from Kiên Yang University, and from An Yang University. I would like to uh, to save a few work at the end to thank. Uh, the teachers and the school authority of the university, not excluding my university, Kunta University, and the School of Foreign Languages, has created uh, uh, the best condition for me to work on the project. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Ian. Fant again, round of applause. Another fantastic presentation. We had three amazing presentations this afternoon from yourself, from Koi, and from, from Tuan. And it's great to see all the com all the positive comments in the chat as well. Um, we're rapidly running out of time, but I want to I don't want to rush off. I want us to have a few minutes uh, to pick up on a few of the comments and a few of the questions uh, before we hand over to, to Indonesia and before people may want to join the Indonesian uh, webinar. Um, can I ask one question? Uh, we'll stay with you, Ian, first before we widen it out to the project as a whole. Um, yeah. A Penny asked a question about evaluation of data. Let me just try to find Penny's question again. There's been a number of comments. Great evaluation, she says. How difficult was it to design the evaluation framework and how difficult was it to collect the data? Ian, that's definitely a question for you. Yeah, so to tell the truth, I, I love researching. So my my job is a combination of uh, teaching and researching. So I love this one. So so in fact, it did not take much time for building up the framework because uh, there are available uh, study out there uh, talking about trauma technique and just want to try it in the Vietnamese context combining with this. So so no, it's not how we're at all because that's my passion of doing research. Thank you. Okay, 
maybe you can connect maybe penny and yourself can connect and and swap swap notes <laughs> about yeah, research, right. uh, research so data a, and methodology i have a profile okay. research gate and i hope that in uh, the few months uh, one year we can publish our uh, uh, article regarding the project yeah. yeah, just just to add to what Ian's saying there, again, this is that, that our first webinar sharing. It's been great to hear Koi and Tu Wang's uh, uh, reflections as teachers and lecturers, but also we, over the next few months and as we move into 2022, we'll certainly, working together, we'll be doing more uh, sharing of some of the findings from, from Ian's research with, uh, with IH Belfast and Hands Up as well. This is just the start of the process, not certainly not the end. Um, thanks, Ian, for that. That was the one question we had, which was definitely for you. Um, there were also a couple, and it also, can I just add, can I just reiterate and emphasize what you said? I, I loved some of your quotes about students, trusting our students, seeing our students as a resource. We often, we often think about course books as a resource or classrooms as a resource. We often forget students are an amazing resource. And that goes back to what both Koi and Tuang were saying before. So it's really nice for you to say at the end, trust your students, empower, empower them. <laughs> You'll be amazed at how creative they can be uh, with content, with language, with drama production, with script writing and everything. And that's a really, really powerful message at the end there. So thanks for that. Also nice to hear you talk about the support you got from, from the school authorities as well and from other universities across the Mekong Delta. That, that's, again, a great message. And um, there were a couple of questions in the chat. I think, Nick, I think you answered them about maybe adapting or, or ad adopting this technique with primary and also creating like a bank of plays. Uh, Nick, do you want to uh, just add anything to those questions or any final comments before we bring the session this afternoon to a close? Well, just on the on the issue of um, doing it with primary learners. Yeah, I mean, we, we in the Hands Up project, we've been working with drama for a long time with learners as low as young as eight. Um, slightly different, of course, um, we're probably not expecting to write plays with that age group, but we're certainly doing lots of physical activities, lots of ways of linking language with uh, gestures and movement and that kind of thing. Total physical response, for instance, is an excellent drama activity for young learners. Um, on the issue of creating a bank of plays, I mean, I would say one of the highlights of my um, uh, career as an English language teacher is giving a book of plays to young people in Palestine where they have a play in the book themselves. You know, it's a huge moment of pride for um, for young people to to feel that they're authors. So I think if we that, I think that's a wonderful idea. I can't remember whose idea it was, but uh, it was, it's uh, a tweez. Tweez. Tweez, yeah, wonderful idea to get a book of these plays created by um, by young people in in uh, Vietnam, that would be fantastic, and hopefully get people around the world re-performing them as well. That would be brilliant. Well, that was one of the great things earlier on in the project when you invited Nga and myself to join you working with the teachers from Palestine. That was yeah. again that that sense of sharing and learning from each other. I thought was fantastic. So as you say, great to kind of share 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 the love and share what what the the, the team down in the Mekong Delta have done uh, here in Vietnam. Not just not just here in Vietnam. And this webinar is a first a first step in that, but also sharing with other parts of the world as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for adding that. Um, and keeping my eye on the chat, I don't see any more questions. Has, it, has anybody got any final comments or final questions? Feel free to raise your hand um, or to shout out if you have a question or any comments from Jonathan, from Koi, uh, from Tuang, Ian or from Nick before we wrap up for today. Well, I'd just like to say um, a big thank you to my partners in the project and also to all obviously to all the teachers and students who have taken part you've 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 demonstrated everything we hoped you were going to be able to do so that's terrific thank you very much and i'm just terribly frustrated that neither nick nor i could actually get out to vietnam to visit you because that was part of the original project and obviously because of the covid restrictions we haven't been able to do that but maybe sometime we live in hope 
Thanks, uh, Jonathan. Thanks for sharing that um, towards the end. That's great. That's a great way. I think that's a great way to finish today. Um, just to remind everybody, starting two minutes ago, I think, in Indonesia, there is the Saturday Tech Talk. OK, um, again, you can have a look there or you uh, the, use the QR code if you want to join uh, now in progress in Indonesia. And remember, in January, we have the our next webinar for the Vivexel project. So again, you can have a look there and you can uh, use the QR code and we'll be advertising that again on our Facebook page over the next few weeks as well. OK, um, so I'm just going to stay with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Again, some great comments. So thank you for all the participation, some really active participation and comments um from everybody in the chat i will put go back to the the link in just a moment uh, Rhett, to for you but i just all that remains for me to say is thanks to jonathan to nick to koi to tuang and to ian i think we've had a really fascinating afternoon uh, some fantastic sharing from a great project and really nice to hear so much sharing and i just hope to go back to what Jonathan was saying, I hope we can continue this dialogue. There's so much more that we can learn and we, we can share with each other. So thanks again for all your time and all your effort, not just today in preparing for this webinar, but over the last few months, as Jonathan said, to everybody involved. So a big round of applause to everybody. Thank you so much. All right. Um, have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year if you're celebrating those. And we'll see you all in 2022. OK, thanks very much to everybody and thanks to everyone participating as well. Really appreciate that. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Saturday. I will share the link to Indonesia right now. Just give me two seconds. There you go. There's the QR code for the webinar now in progress in Indonesia. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Saturday. OK, thanks, Ian. You're, still, you're on mute, Ian. So I'm leaving. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to OnBC team. Have a good time this weekend. David. Thanks very much, Ian. Appreciate that. Thanks mm. for all your support today. That's okay. really useful. Great. See you okay, soon, yeah? Yeah, see you. Bye, Ian. Thanks. <laughs>